and science, students will be able to describe the needs of living things by observing and reading text so that they can identify the essential parts of a habitat. A habitat is a place where a plant or animal lives. Think about it. What do living things need? Does every habitat have those things? Let's learn more about habitats. People live in all kinds of places. So do animals. There are animals all around us. An animal's neighborhood is called a habitat. Every habitat provides an animal with food, water, shelter, and space to move around in. Animals and plants depend on each other for survival. Most animals eat plants. Other animals eat animals that eat plants. Plants depend on animals to fertilize the soil and to help plants spread their seeds so that more plants can grow. Animals live in different habitats and have different purposes in nature. If all animals ate the same things and lived in the same place, there wouldn't be enough food to go around. And it would be very crowded. There are many kinds of habitats. Some are hot and some are cold. Some are dry and some are very wet. Some are high and others are low. Underground or underwater. Forests have lots of trees, but grasslands have almost no trees. Wetlands have lots of water, but a desert has very little water. Each habitat is just right for the animals that live there. Video, I took notes. An animal habitat needs food, water, shelter, and space. Let's look closely at the desert habitat. I'm going to take notes while we watch. Deserts. Some animals make their home in the driest of places. The desert is a habitat where very little rain falls. Most deserts are very hot during the day and cooler at night. Animals here must find shade from the hot sun to survive, under plants and under rocks. Desert animals have adapted to survive in an environment where water and food can be very hard to find. Many reptiles live in the desert Reptiles depend on the environment to change their body temperature. That means that a reptile's body is as warm or as cold as the area around them. Lizards get cold at night, so they come out into the sun each morning to warm up. When it gets too hot, they go back into the shade to cool off. A lizard's flat, thin body lets it easily slip into tight places between rocks. Most desert animals sleep during the day to avoid the hot sun. Jackrabbits dig cool resting places in the shade of desert bushes. Their fur color blends in with the bushes and sand, protecting them from predators. A jackrabbit's big ears help it get rid of extra body heat when the sun is at its hottest. One of the largest animals in American deserts is the bighorn sheep. Male bighorn sheep are called rams. They have thick, curved horns. They use their horns to battle other rams during mating season. Females, called ewes, are smaller than rams, and they have smaller horns. Bighorn sheep live in rocky deserts. Their hooves help them grip and climb on slippery rocks while they graze on desert shrubs and grasses. 
Bighorns can live several days without taking a single drink of water. Because there is so little water, very few plants can grow in the desert. Many desert plants have thick, waxy skin that holds water inside. Even when it doesn't rain, some desert animals get the water they need by eating these plants. The saguaro cactus is an unusually large desert plant. It can grow taller than a four-story building, but it grows very slowly. Many birds find shelter in this prickly giant. Gila woodpeckers make nests for their families by picking out holes in the cactus's thick stems. When they move out, other animals move in. Every summer, the cactus produces juicy red fruit, a delicious treat for thirsty desert animals. As the sun starts to set, the desert cools down. Coyotes come out of their dens to search for food. Coyotes are some of nature's most adaptable animals. They can survive in many different habitats. Coyotes change their behavior and the food they eat depending on where they live. In the desert, coyotes use their sharp sense of smell to hunt small animals or find wild fruits. Like their dog cousins, coyotes howl, bark, and yelp to talk to other coyotes. At night, the desert is a quiet place, except for the sound of howling coyotes. ...were hot and had little rain. Here are some of their animals and plants. Did the desert habitat have all four essential parts? Yes. Next, we'll travel to a wetlands habitat. I'll take notes while we watch. Wetlands. A wetland is any place where the soil is moist and wet. Many wetlands are so soggy, they are almost completely covered by shallow water. They are often near lakes and rivers, but they can also be sunken grassy areas where water collects. Many, many types of birds, fish, insects, reptiles, and mammals find food and protection in and around these watery habitats. A wetland supports so much wildlife because it offers lots of different places to live and find food. Some animals, like fish, live underwater. Others, like turtles, which are reptiles, spend most of their time near the water's surface. And some animals, like raccoons, live on the spongy banks nearby. Frogs have skin that needs to stay moist, so a soggy wetland makes the perfect home. The frog is an amphibian that can live and breathe in water and on land. Frogs have wide back feet with webbed toes, an adaptation that helps them swim well. On land, frogs don't walk, they hop. Their back legs have strong muscles that help them jump quickly away from enemies. Frogs generally find shelter out of the sun, under leaves or other ground cover. Many birds depend on wetlands, even if they don't live there all the time. Some make temporary homes here to raise babies. Others feed on and find shelter in the rich plants that grow on the banks of wetlands. Herons wade in the water and use their sharp beaks to spear fish. A muskrat is a small furry animal that is also a great swimmer. The muskrat uses his webbed hind feet as paddles and uses its skinny tail to steer. Muskrats often use wetland plants to make small huts in marshy water. Others dig burrows on the bank beside water. Muskrats can't move very quickly on land, so their best defense from enemies is to swim into their watery shelters when danger is near. 
One of the fiercest predators of wetlands is the alligator. The alligator has short legs, a flat, scaly body, and a long, thick tail. But the most noticeable alligator feature is its powerful jaws and big, sharp teeth. Alligators can move very fast in water and on land, but most of the time they stay very still. They hide in tall grass or just under the surface of the water until they see a good meal come along. The wetlands habitat was wet and soggy. Here are some of the plants and animals we saw. Did the wetland have all four essential parts? Yes. What do desert and wetland habitats have in common? Both habitats had enough water and food for the animals that made it their home. There were many kinds of plants, birds, reptiles, and mammals. Next, let's travel to a grassland. I'll take notes while we watch. Grasslands. Grasslands provide a different habitat for plants and animals. Grasslands are wide open spaces covered with grass, shrubs, and a few trees. Sometimes this habitat is also called a prairie. At first, a grassland looks like one big sea of grass. But if you look closer, you'll see many animals living here too. Most types of trees can't grow in grassland because not enough rain falls to help them grow. With so few trees, Grassland animals can't depend on nuts, berries, bark, and other tree parts for food as forest animals can. But there's always plenty of grass, and many animals find food, shelter, and protection in the grasslands. Some of the biggest animals that live in grasslands are grazers, or grass eaters, like bison. Bison have special stomachs that help them digest grass. Their thick winter coats give them warmth and shelter during the cold winter. Bison travel in large groups called herds. The group helps protect baby bison from predators. Bison groups move around while grazing, so they don't eat up all the grass in one place. Grasshoppers are not picky eaters. They eat just about every leaf and plant stalk in their path. Insects like the grasshopper are food for birds and other small grassland animals. Grasshoppers find some protection from these predators because their color helps them blend into the grasses around them. Without tall trees to nest in, the prairie chicken builds its nest on the ground. Even though they can fly, grassland birds often run on the ground to escape their enemies. Prairie chickens eat insects, leaves, and grains. Many grassland creatures are burrowers, animals that dig tunnels underground. The gopher is a burrowing animal. For the gopher, a tunnel is a safe place to hide from predators. Gophers and many other burrowing animals have sharp front teeth and claws that help them dig. Gophers tend to eat roots and plants they find near the top of the soil. Prairie dogs aren't dogs at all. They're more closely related to squirrels. They got their name because sometimes they make a barking sound like dogs. Prairie dogs are burrowing animals that live in large tunnel colonies called towns. At the entrance to their burrows, they build a small hill to use as a lookout post. Prairie dogs, like most grassland plant eaters, graze in daylight so they can watch for predators. If danger is near, the guard signals to the other animals to run for cover. Grasslands have lots of space and lots of grass. 
Grasslands have the four essential parts of an animal habitat? Yes. All of the habitats we looked at had enough water for their animals, food, shelter, space, and many different kinds of animals that made it their home. Today we watch videos to see what needs living things in each habitat have. Then we compared the habitats and showed that they all had essential parts like providing food and water. You can research more about habitats on Pebble Go.